Hello again, bronies, Pegasisters, and non-believers. I am Raz, and I'm back with a totally new game and possibly video series for you to look at. Very interesting. <laughs> as you can see, this is not Tribes, as I was recording just a few minutes ago. In fact, we're here with Earth Defense Force Intec Armageddon. Now, what is this, you may ask? I don't really know. I've played a few rounds of it, but I can't really tell you much beyond basic details, which is, it's a third-person shooter in which aliens appear to have invaded Earth, have caused all of the insects to grow to giant size, and all of the insects now sport lasers and things like that. I don't really know the details because I haven't actually played the campaign yet. I think see, I'm not exactly sure there's campaign and there's campaign remix. I don't know what campaign remix is, but there is a campaign. I have not even clicked on that yet. And there's survival mode, which is exactly what it says on the tin. Hold down, how long can you last against waves of monsters? In the background is doing a pretty good job of showing off what the heck you're dealing with. Giant robotic insects that decimate everything. So, for this time I'm going to leave the Let's Playing for another day, because it's all, you know, I've already done an hour or so of Let's Playing Tribe, so I don't really feel like doing more right now, and I don't, and I'm saving the campaign for another day. It does have co-op, so I'm hoping I can get some friends wrapped into it and, you know, actually show off the game at its fullest. This game is best played co-op from what I've heard. So, without further ado, I'm going to go offline and run a survival map this time around, to show off the gameplay a bit. Now, as you can see, you start off with your character, and you can change their color scheme to whatever you want. Various camouflage patterns available. So we can find the one, aren't sure, that one. Red and white. There's also a class system. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but for some reason I can't change it. I believe when you play the campaign, you can unlock other classes that all have different abilities and power-ups help your team, so that would be pretty cool. You then have to select a pet, a single set of weapons that are going to be yours throughout the entire round, so best to pick something that's actually useful. As you can see, you have sniper rifles, shotguns, grenade launchers, missile launchers, rocket launchers, and assault rifles. I prefer having an assault rifle at all times because they're very versatile. From there, you know, sniper rifles, shotguns, grenade launchers, missiles, you name it, you've got it sort of thing. As you can see, there's two weapons under each category. I'm not sure if there's more weapons unlocked later, you know. I think a lot of the stuff is tied to the campaign mode and online, so survival's a bit of a pain to play through, but we'll give it a go. Take a rocket launch this time. Begin survival mode. Let's get to it. Let's show what we're made of. Pour it on, boys. As I said, it's third Ravages person. Inbound. It's very In arcadey as well. You two, have tons one, of health. Zero. Monsters die pretty quickly. You know, it's not really meant to be taken seriously, from what I can tell. Yeah, as you can see, the first wave's already on the way. Thought I'd see the day when an ant would be throwing cars at me. Oh, we have a rocket launcher, we might as well give it a shot. Now, as you can see, buildings are also destructible. Hell, the entire environment is pretty much destructible and easily destroyed. As you can see, just one or two rockets bring most buildings down. Oh, crap. Hello, another car. Yeah, as I said, the game doesn't appear to want to be taken seriously. I saw a couple of reviews for the original Earth Defense game on the console, and I remember that one of the biggest things that was said was the game was actually so bad it was hilariously good. Which intrigued me, but I never actually got around to checking 
game out myself, and I found a copy of it. And then Insect Armageddon, though, has come out on Steam, PC, so here we are. I haven't played the campaign yet, so I can't judge on the whole so bad it's good situation, but I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Just running around fighting giant insects and rocket launchers. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. There's not many games that just let you go nuts and do things. Hello, what's this? Heck. Holy crap, this game just got 20% cooler. Yes, I will admit I haven't actually done this level before, so finding the mech is pretty spectacular. But yeah, there there is various things like this mech suits, there's stationary turrets and things you can operate. <laughs> That's one of the few jokes I've seen is when one of your teammates is not here will complain about not having enough ammo and yet you have unlimited ammo. I'm not sure if that's an intentional joke or what, but it always cracks me up to hear. And now apparently we have a giant ant and giant spiders. The spiders are probably the worst enemy in my opinion, just because I... Well, I'm not actually arachnophobic, but I really do not like spiders. So seeing giant spiders crawling all over the buildings is a bit of a creep out of me. And that in itself is just creepy. Seeing the insects and that just crawling over buildings, very surreal to me. I have no idea why, but just seeing the, you know, you're looking at a skyscraper or something and seeing a giant spider clinging to the side of it and crawling along, that never ceases to send a chill down my spine. And the spiders can jump at you, apparently. I think I'm gonna get out of this mech soon, it's kinda slowing me down a bit. Besides, I don't want to spend the entire game locked in a mech suit. There's on foot things to be doing. Running away around and screaming. Probably get out of this wave. Anyway, as I've been saying, so far the game has been pretty impressive in my books. It doesn't try to be anything more than it actually is. I mean, it's a mindless arcade shooter, pretty much, when it comes to survival. And it, you know, doesn't try to be anything else. It knows the campaign is a mindless shooter, and that's what it is. Well, it's survival. Three, two, I can't talk one, about the campaign at zero. all yet. Oh hey, the aliens themselves here. And they brought wasps. Wasps with laser beams! You know, if the insect kingdom actually had laser beams, we'd be screwed. We need, you know, you'll be using a can of Mortine on them and they'll just vaporize them with a goddamn laser. Take down and get them, this is, folks. And apparently immune to assault rifle fire. Okay, let's try the big guns. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think the, uh, people are going to be happy when there's more damage done by the soldiers protecting the city than there is by the alien invaders we're supposed to be protecting it from. I don't know. I think someone's going to be mad about that. Oh, it is. Yeah, I'm getting torn apart out here. This is really bad. Really, really bad. I just happened to glance down and see that I'm down to like 60 health. I can't get... Ah, I'm down. And because I don't have any teammates, that's it. Game over, unfortunately. Now, as you can see, I can select the mission, and I can try it again, or I can quit. So I'm gonna quit. And, I don't know, I might actually give it a try online, see if we can find anyone playing it. Go survival again. Any... Searching for games... Look, a giant spider that spits lasers. 
I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that. Oh, I'm alone. Forever alone. Meanwhile, I can have a look at some different weapons. I have actually tried the other sniper, the other assault rifle, and personally, I don't think it's that good. It comes with a scope, but it has barely any ammo, and it only fires in like single shot, so. Pretty, it's alright if you're into that sort of thing, but personally, I prefer the, the Norwood. Fully automatic, lots of bullets. Can't go wrong. And we don't appear to be getting any joiners, unfortunately. I know I'm being a bit impatient, but still. I don't want to be sitting here too long. So, I'll tell you what, we'll do one more survival round. Go any again, just let it pick randomly. Go with a missile launcher this time because they actually have lock on functionality. Begin survival mode. Ooh, a new map. Next wave in three, tank? two, one, zero. Drive the tank? Yes! This game just got 30% cooler. And they're throwing trucks at me now. I call foul. I mean, come on, they're ants. How the hell would they be able to throw trucks at me? I don't care if they're colossal size. Controls are a little wonky, unfortunately. Ow. Apparently, the controls are relative to the camera position of the actual tank. That's a little uncomfortable. Yeah, as I've said several times now, I'm having a blast playing this game. Much like Tribes, you know? One of those games that I certainly can enjoy. I'll certainly be playing a lot more of it, and all going well in the next few days. I'll probably start the campaign, hopefully record some of it, or all of it if I can. I'm just trying to find out if I can get anyone to play with, you know, get a co-op thing happen, get some guest stars on here or something. Guest stars, yeah. Another right turn for it, I think. Yeah, I'm hoping I can get some friends into it, or people I know from PC Powerplay forums. Get some co-op happening. It would be a lot better if I could do that rather than just playing solo. I almost feel sorry for the ants. I mean, come on, they're not even scratching the bloody tank and I'm just mowing them down. I'm the only bugger here! I suppose technically the battle, you know, the radio chat is supposed to be for the entire city or something and there's other teams out there, but... I don't know. Hearing someone say they're taking casualties just cracks me up a little bit because it's like, come on. I'm the only person here and I'm not dead, so how are we taking casualties? That spider totally pulled the building down. He saw it, I saw it. Not my fault. Uh, still another way from out there. I don't really feel like driving the tank too much more, because again, I don't want to spend the entire recording in a vehicle. When it comes to controls, everything's pretty solid in my opinion. The vehicle, as I said, is a little long. Crap! Hello? The vehicle controls are a little wonky, but, you know, nothing perfect. I find the controls of the battlefield to be a bit wonky, and they're like, solid. Yeah, aside from that, you know, the controls are pretty good. You've got a dive roll to avoid enemy attacks. Plenty of big guns to nail them with. Well, 
though, alternatively, just nuke the entire back down. generally different in each map up now, which is pretty good. Sometimes you'll have the UFOs that hit you right in the first wave, or the second wave, and other times you won't see them for ages. The ants are pretty much there all the way through. I guess they're supposed to be like the most basic enemy or something. Every map I've played so far, the ants have been pretty much wave one on this, and they're always in heavy numbers. Oh crap, ticks. Ant wave. Get off. A pointless achievement. Yes, as you can see, every type of insect imaginable is now giant sized one. So that's fun. Ow, ow, ow. Ticks are a pain mostly because they do that. They just leap on your back and slow you down and drain your health. I much prefer the ant fishes that they just stand that spitting acid or whatever that crud is. Painful anyway. Spiders, well, they're just a pain with that leap attack. Web's easily avoided, but the pounce attacks. And, and honestly, I see more than enough of spiders around here. I don't need giant ones all up in my face when I'm trying to play a video game. I can't help but be reminded of Halo while dodging the ticks. God, it's the flood all over again. I'm having Halo flashbacks, man. <laughs> See, once again, not funny before I even said it. Oh god, hello. I don't know, these things are almost terrifying up close. At first I didn't notice it, but the more you look at them, you know, especially when the spiders or something get up in your face, I'm an Really don't want to see that. Bad when one of them comes just crawling around the side of a building at you. Certainly leaves an impression. Oh god. Die. As you've no doubt noticed by now, there is a bit of a Gears of War style active reload system in there so you can reload faster, but... I don't know, when it comes to any with rocket launchers, not it's extremely useful because they take so long to reload, but I've noticed with the assault rifle, there really isn't much point to it. Ah, I missed it that time. Because with the re reload on the uh, assault rifle being pretty much as fast as the active reload can provide, you're only shaving about a quarter of a second or something. Straight enough. Like I said, the controls for the tank are extremely bothersome. The more I use it, the more I get bothered by it. But overall, for a console port, it's pretty good going. At least I assume it's a console port. The first game was console only. So I assume that it's a port. Zero. Pretty solid one of that, in my opinion. There's... Oh dear, get back in the tank, get back in the tank. You know, I haven't seen much adverse about it. I haven't checked the, the video settings for that. I don't really care for that sort of thing. If the game works, it works. No offense to Total Biscuit, but it's not really my job to review a game, so I just play it. I don't stop to look at all the merits of what it has and what it doesn't. Overall, oh god, things are everywhere and the tank is not holding up too well. Overall, if I haven't stressed it enough, I do really like this game and it's only like $15 on Steam when I bought it, so. I don't know. For that price, it's well worth the money in my opinion. I'm not sure I would pay, you know, 60 70 bucks for it, but then again, I probably would actually. 
I don't mind mindless arcade shooters. This game is pretty much just that. I haven't, I haven't tried the campaign, so I don't know how good the story is, but overall, you know, you go into survival, play an hour or two, and then you leave it. You know, get me money's worth easy. But I enjoy games like this, where you can just zone out and shoot stuff. God, how, why does it take to kill these bloody wasps? I'm getting out and using the damn rocket launcher on them. Screw this. Ha, huh, they have a weakness to rockets. Maybe they don't. Maybe that first one was just being polite when it keeled over. Ow, ow, I'm practically dead, so I better get back in the tank. Ow! Backing up, backing up. It's not working. It's not working. Flinching. Ow. And that's the end of that. Ow. Oh well. That was a fun, I don't know, half hour or so. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly enjoyed that. And laser breathing spiders. Produce other spiders. Brilliant. Anyway. I certainly had a lot of fun, and as I said, if I can rope some friends in, I'll be doing the campaign soon, cooperatively, and if not, screw it, I'll do it myself. But yeah, I have this lined up after I get bored with tribes, or just, you know, stop recording. I don't know how many more Let's Play episodes I can get out of that before it just becomes repetitive. So I've got this lined up, I have a couple of other projects I'm looking at as well, but only time will tell. We'll see what happens in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed that brief look at Earth Defense Force, Insect Armageddon, and I don't know, hopefully I swayed a few of you to give it a shot. It's a fun arcade style shooter. Has plenty of big guns and big explosions. And from what I've seen in the trailers, it only gets bigger with the other classes and as you level up. So I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Who knows, maybe a few of you will be swayed from playing it, and maybe play it with me. We'll see what happens. But for now, I have been Raz, and I'll see you next time.